ladies and gentlemen, your referee this evening, Lou McMahon. And welcome to UHW Havoc. I am Manuel Maximo alongside Chase Hunter. And we have a great show for you tonight. And we have some we also have some great action. So without any further ado, let's get it started, shall we? Sounds like a plan, just waiting on word from production. Oh, jeez. I am Edward Smith. First of all, I would like to congratulate our champion Matt Gale and women's champion Justine Time for their victories last week, earning them their banners. Unfortunately, James Icarus the Third did not successfully defend his title, therefore he will not get a banner. Tyler Corvus, congratulations, you are the new Challenger's Choice Champion. Well, you will not get a banner until you successfully have defended that belt. You will have the opportunity to do so tomorrow on DNA. As your Challenger will be none other than former United Universal Champion Vince Easterwood. Good day. Well, that's an interesting turn of events. I would agree with you on that. Tomorrow in DNA, Tyler Corvus putting up his uh, Challenger's Choice Championship against uh, Vince Easterwood. That should be a really interesting match. I'll say. I know those two have battled in the past, and and I know that Tyler is going to give his all tomorrow. Absolutely. This will be the first time that Tyler will be in the champion's position for those two meeting. Well, regardless, it is time for our first match. So, ladies and gentlemen... Let's get this show on the road. The first match is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first from Oakland, California, weighing in at 200 pounds at a height of six feet even. This is Dominique Jackson. Dominique, report to the main stage.
and her opponent. Weighing 166 pounds from Oshkosh, Wisconsin, standing 5 foot 4, this is Nicole. Nicole, report to the main stage. All right, these two ladies ready to face off here. And they're off. Both women staring at each other inside the middle of the ring. And we got a lock up here. I'm going to be starting off with a wrist lock. And it takes her down with a clothesline. Going for another lock, but Nicole shoves her back and cinches in a side headlock there. Now with Dominique Jackson with an Irish whip sending Nicole off the ropes, but oh, this front drop kick from Nicole going straight for the pin. One, two, and no, only a two count. She actually got a little bit of height on that drop kick. And now Nicole, Nicole picking up Dominique there, going off the ropes. Comes Dominique now. Oh, and a leaping shoulder block. Dominique composing her will here. <laughs> Coming off the ropes with a leg drop. Let's see what Dominique is going to do here. She's now in complete control of the match.
And Dominique, go for the cover. One! Only, Only a one, one count. Let's see. Let's see what Dominique is going is planning here. Got her in the front face lock. Cold, none too happy, shoving her back again. Oh, comes, oh goes up the ropes, but Dominique hits her with that kick right to the midsection. Uh, and a cold with a bear hug! <laughs> oh! Oh! Dominique with a sidewalk slam, taking the gold down to the mat. On the cover here. One, two, no, only two. So far, these ladies are pretty evenly matched here. And let's see what let's see what Dominique is uh, thinking, picking up Nicole once again. So they're both pretty back and forth match so far. This one's gonna come down to who can who has the highest constitution. Oh vicious chop there. Corner splash, taking her down. Another front face lock by uh, Dominique. Pulling uh, Nicole right into the middle of the ring. Sound strategy, getting her out of the corner. No, she can't pin her over there. Oh, looks like Nicole's trying to go for it. Not Nicole, but Dominique is trying to go for a suplex. Nicole keeps blocking. Nicole able to get out. Here comes Dominique. And going for inverted atomic drop. And then right into a shin buster. Now grabbing the, the leg of Dominique. What is she I was wonder what's she going to do here? Telling her to stay there like she's some kind of dog. Ooh, wrapping the knee around the corner post. Oh, it looks like she's trying to work on that leg. That'll definitely take some of her power advantage away.
And wrapping the knee around the ropes, definitely working that knee over. That is a, that is a good strategy from Nicole. And it looks like she's she's putting more pressure, just squeezing her her foot on that leg. And now dragging her back to the center of the ring. Complying with the referee's request there. Oh, now she's going to add more injury into that leg by using the figure four leg lock right in the center of the ring. Lifting her body up, putting some leverage on it. Give it that little extra oomph. Adding to the pressure on the knee. Will Dominique tap here? Dominique trying to struggle her way to the ropes. And she's got him. Now Nicole has to break the hold. Doesn't look like she's breaking. Referee's going to have to start counting here. Nicole better be careful because she, she would be disqualified if she doesn't break the hold by the, time, by the count of five. Nicole able to, she, she was able to release the hold just in time. What does the women's champion have to do with this? I said just in time, not just in, never mind. Anyway, Nicole's bringing Dominique right into the middle of the ring once again. But... But no, Do Dominique, going for a pin roll-up. Dominique only getting a one count on that. Nicole now picking up Dominique. And now both women are just trading a... Uh, Blows here. There we go. It's starting to break down now. We started off with a very technical match. And now it's just coming to blows. Oh, now we with the head button. Oh, huge soldier block by Dominique. Dominique picking up. Nicole. Ooh, now Nicole with, I mean Dominique with a headlock takedown. Nicole doesn't like that one bit. Let's see what Nicole's going to do here. Okay. 
Now Dominique's standing up. Oh, the harsh kick to the midsection. And now... Oh! Now Dominique going with that German suplex. But only got a two count. Once again, Dominique in complete control. She almost had the three right there. And now Dom Dominique picking up Nicole. There goes Nicole off the ropes. Oh, and a beautiful clothesline. Oh, and Nicole with a sitting senton. Going for the pin here. We got one, two, and oh, only a two count. And now Nicole back with a side headlock. But Dominic countering with that Irish whip. Sending Nicole off the ropes and Nicole coming down with that dropped hold. Dominique getting up. Getting up slowly. And now, oh, what's going on? Oh, modified, modified version of pile driver. There's a cover one. Two and three, ladies and gentlemen, your winner by pinfall, Nicole. All right, that was a very good match. Very good. First match. Now we are just anticipating to see what we're going to have next. So I'm just waiting in the back to see what is going to happen next.
Oh, wait a minute. Ladies and gentlemen, the fallen sisters, Malice and Trisha. The fallen sisters, as of late, have been on a crusade to take out the Fate Weavers. Trish is saying, okay, cut the music. Trish is saying, so it seems that we've finally seen the true nature of the Fate Weavers, and they seem to have the upper hand on us Fallens. Assure you that's not the case in the slightest. Even though we appeared beaten and battered, it was all in the plan to divulge who they really are. Arrogant, evil queens of chaos with only one thing on their minds, and that's pain and suffering. And that's not happening in our house. So know that so no they haven't beaten us yet. If that's all they have to give, then they can keep on coming back. Trust me, Fate Weavers, you haven't seen us at our best yet. And speaking of the best, at this time, I'd like to introduce you to my new best friend. Monstra, come on out. What the? And business just picked up. Monster, for your courage and bravery for saving me from an uncertain death from anarchy. I like you to I like to invite you to the League of the Fallen Angels. Though you need not wear these, please accept these wings as a symbol of the sisterhood. May they protect you, bring you even more courage in protecting this house of the fallen.
Montserrat saying, Trish, thank you. I feel honored, but I'm not, but I'm not the one that needs protection today. Last time we saw these people. Anarchy thinks she's the craziest bitch around, and I have news for her. That little bitch hasn't seen bad shit yet. I know you're back there. We're calling out anarchy. Get the fuck out here and get the payback I owe you for carving my face in three weeks ago. Referring to the last time we saw them out here, uh, Trisha was down on the ground, Monster came out to save Trisha, and Anarchy repaid her by beating her repeatedly with a barbed wire baseball bat. Did I think that was on fire? Yes, it was on fire. So the challenge has been issued. Will we see a response? Let's see. And here they come, the Fate Weavers. Do we scare you so much you had to hire a moose to take us out? You can't do it by yourselves. That's okay. I'll take a piece of her. Sorry. Another piece of her. And I'll hand her back when she's sufficiently more. <laughs> yeah. The only one who has a puppy is your yourself with that little puppy you call a manager named Holder Woman. Where's the little bitch at, huh? It's too scared to come out with us. <laughs>
Little monster. Not sort of begging anarchy to come up, and there's they are. I don't know if this is a official match or not. Not sure if this is an official match either. I'm waiting to see if uh, Captain Douchebag gives us a uh, any word. And I'm receiving word from Edward Smith that, yes, this will be an official match. Well, that's good. Now all we need is a ref to officiate it. Oh, and Monster... Monster with the shove right to anarchy. Definitely no love lost between these two. And we got a lock up. Is he over at ringside with that shoulder arm in a sling due to the injury she sustained in a match with Justine several weeks ago when Justine took the title? And here comes senior referee Alfie Denzo. This match must be important if they brought Alfie out. And Masha imposing her will, shoving Anarchy into the corner. Well, that she can do that, you know, given the size and strength of Monstra. Absolutely. Ooh, and a corner splash, taking Anarchy down. Monster with a pickup on Anarchy. Coffee's going to have a tough time trying to separate these two if they don't want to break when they're up against the ropes or in the corner. As he reaches a three count and Monstra backs up. Waiting for Anarchy to get up, stalking her opponent here. 
This may not be good for anarchy. And okay, oh, yep, here comes Monster charging in. Look out! Oh, but Anarchy with the drop toe hold right onto their ropes. And bouncing off the turnbuckle there. Yes, it's true what they say. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. That is true. It looks like now Anarchy it is con in control. Out of Fidenzo telling them to get out of the corner. Looks like the ring may have even shifted on that one. Oh, and now a knee right to the gut of anarchy. Sending her to the ropes. Spine Buster! And then she continues to pound on her. And picking her up. Not letting her get any type of rest. Staying on top of her opponent here. Oh! Monster with a lung blower. Once again, picking up uh, Anarchy. Oh, devastating move there. Once again, Monster in complete control of the match. I should send the Anarchy right into the ropes. And another Spine Buster and staying on top of pounding and pounding and pounding. Going for the cover. One, two, and Anarchy manages to get the shoulder up there. Monster not wasting any time picking her up. Knee to the gut and a forearm club. Setting in the ropes and Anarchy reverses it with a hot moonsault. Good countermeasures there. But the damage has been done. 
as she tries to catch her breath holding that spine after being pounded twice. Off the ropes with a leg drop. Maybe hurt herself a little bit in the process since that spine's already been damaged. Just dropping down on that for that leg drop could have shook it again. And one of the Fate Weaver's signature moves here, the neck wrench hold. Going to try and rip Monstro's head off. It's going to have a lot of work with those neck muscles. Ooh, with the strikes to the side of the head. Monster fighting her way back to her feet. Oh, and a spear taking Anarchy down. Folded her like an accordion. Devastating maneuver there. And just demonstrating the power she possesses by lifting Anarchy just hold over her head and holding her there. And talking uh, trash while she's at it. Well, with the, with the physique like that, you know, she does have, how you say, the... She has the, the strength to back it. To back it up. And the military press throw. Anarchy goes to the outside. Wow. Just the raw display of power there. What's Monster? Where is Monster going outside? Uh, she's going after her opponent because why let her rest after getting tossed out of the ring when you can go out there and inflict more punishment? Alfie telling them to get back in the ring. Referee at three. Oh, and a snake eyes onto our commentary desk here. Oh. Monstra sliding in to break the count and goes right back out to the floor. And it looks like Anarchy is uh, bleeding right now. And let's see what Monster is going to do here. His anarchy right up against our announce table. He got oh! 
quick thinking there on the part of Anarchy with that rebound DDT taking the monster down. And now Alf Alfie Denzo. Now checking monsters to see if she's okay. Remember, she hit that con she hit that concrete there. Remember that that little pat that little mat does not give any any give whatsoever. Uh oh. Anarchy looks a little bit frustrated. Looks like she's looking under the ring for something. Well, she better hurry, because you said Monster got her composure back. As Anarchy pulls a table out from under the ring. Ooh, and the corn kick takes Monster down. Uh, look, wait, it looks like it took the ref. Looks like she also took the referee down. I was wondering where Alfie went. Hey, what's what's this? We got Trish and Izzy coming to words over on the side of the ring, and Malice. Oh, oh my God! Oh, Malice grabbed something from behind the commentary table and just smacked Anarchy with it. Looks like a tire iron. Why the hell is there a tire iron behind commentary? Your guess is as good as mine. Now, Mavis, it's like Mavis just tossed that uh, tire on her underneath the ring. Alfie's just getting up right now. And Izzy took a swing and knocked Trish down. Oh no, oh no, Monster with the. Oh no! Monster with the power bomb right into the table. Izzy's got a lead pipe, and the sling is gone. Oh, this this just went to chaos. Oh, it's a fate weaver match. Why wouldn't it go to chaos? The referee, well, because the referee's lost control. Referee's up to seven, eight. We have a battle over here, and. Is he not is he anarchy knocked down? Is he wasn't hurt at all? And referee Gee. went to ten, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, oh, ladies and gentlemen, this match is a double count out. Is he was using that sling to conceal a lead pipe? As her and Trish continue to battle, referee counted both participants out as they just lost control and were beating the hell out of each other over here in front of us.
Mantra said, you ain't seen crazy yet. I'm about to whip somebody's ass. Dances and sings her way backstage. That has to be one of the most crazy matches I have ever had the privilege of commentating for, if you want to call it a privilege. You and me both, Anarchy still here on the floor, right in front of us. Laid out, bleeding. If there's one thing you don't do is make a Fate Weaver bleed their own blood. Anarchy tries to get to her feet and falls right back down. I think we're going to need some medical attention out here. Anarchy, we're getting ourselves back up. Again, manages to stay up on a knee this time, and she's just sitting here grinning. I can guarantee you this is not the last we've seen of this. Alfie, you may want to get out of the way there. And refusing to wait for medical attention, Anarchy is making her way backstage under her own volition. I am very disappointed. After having to cancel shows last week and the week before last, and this week having trouble trying to find matches to book, you take it upon yourself to not participate because your shoulder was injured. Well... Since you seem to deem yourself fit enough to interject yourself in that match just now, I'm going to say I don't care whether you have doctor's clearance or not. Report back to the ring. You now have a match, and your opponent will be Miss Misty. Good day. Oh, ho, ho. It looks like... It looks like uh, Mr. Smith was saw what happened there. And now forcing Izzy to go into a match against Miss Misty. Well, without any further ado, let us get with this match. This following match is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first from the Eye of Terror, weighing in at 150 pounds at a height of 5'11". This is Easy Fate Weaver. I'm not sure if that was a good idea or not. If she isn't medically cleared, that could open us up for a major lawsuit here. And 
Izzy's making her way to the ring and she doesn't look happy at all. All right, and her opponent, as you heard by Mr. Smith, from South Carolina, weighing in at 150 pounds at a height of six foot, six feet even. This is Miss Misty. Miss Misty going straight in and slapping Izzy, not a good idea. And Izzy responding in kind with several punches, and now that, which is called, what, the Rage Combo, I believe.
both ladies going back and forth, locking each other up and shoving each other down. As he says, have you met my friend Matt? Kick to the gut and the swinging neck breaker. Followed up with a stomp. Picking your back up. And Misty, none too happy, takes her down with a back body drop. And we got a lot of trash talking going on. Staying on top of her with a stomp. And another stomp. Right to the knee. Gonna work on those wheels early. So that's why there was a tire iron behind commentary. Misty working over those legs. Is he having nothing to do with it? Going with another rage combo and a fish drop right into the midsection. And going right into the Boston Crab. Move that Izzy has been known to do a lot. Is he wrenching back Misty, trying to claw her way to the ropes so she can force this hole to get broken? And Misty's got a hold of the rope. And Alfie starts to count. Alfie up to two. And Izzy releases the hold. Not because she was worried about being disqualified, but because if the match ends now, she wouldn't get to hurt Misty. As much as she would like to. And Misty taking her down with a spear. Is he down on the mat? Well, she got that wind knocked out of her on that one. And Misty's going with the tap or snap. Figure four leg lock locked in. Continuing to work on those legs. Is he shifting around trying to create momentum to try and roll her over and reverse that hold?
And it looks like she's she's gonna. And she does! Reversing the polarity of that hold. Putting all the weight on Misty's knees and who wisely lets go of the hold. And is he taking her legs out from under her and knocking her down to the mat? And there we go with some more stomps. And there we go with the neck wrench hold once again. A Fate Weaver signature. Is he saying, let's make her a Pez dispenser, we'd rather you not, because the Pez that comes out of that Pez dispenser is be nasty. And a sit flip face buster! And is he going for the cover? One, two. Misty not having any of it. Getting the shoulder up. And Misty, not taking kindly to the words Izzy's been saying, hits her with a power bomb and goes for the cover. One, two, but Izzy kicks out. Now Missy picking Izzy up off the mat. Throws her into the corner. And working those knees once again. Wrapping it around the the ropes there. Alfie warning them to get out of the corner. And Misty's taking the knees to Izzy's abdomen there. Alfie up to three.
Misty daring the referee to go call the DQ. Grabbing Izzy in the front face lock and dragging her out of the corner. Just to make Alfie happy. And kick to the gut. And here we go, she's starting the side chant. Oh, this can't be good. No way. Easy counted. And Izzy with the Slanish twist. One, two, three. And it's over. Your winner, Izzy Fate Weaver. Izzy saying, good job, come talk to me later. Misty nodding. What the hell is up with that? The fate with this, you never can tell what's going on through in their head. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to pay the bills around here, so please uh, pay some attention to the screen as we hear from some of the people who make this possible every week.
All right. So those are some of the people who make coming to you live every week possible. But I guess that means that it's now time for the main event of the evening. Who's ready for the main event? Let me hear you, people. Looks like I got here just in time. Our main event will be featuring our women's champion. So let's make some noise. Introducing first, The Challenger. The Challenger. From Seattle, Washington, weighing in at 130 pounds, standing five foot nine, Trisha Stratus Easterwood. Jill in a production truck is such a Justine Mark, he just couldn't wait to play the video. Wait, we've moved up from monkeys. I would say that Joe is either in love with Justine, but then again, it may be Mr. Smith's doing, since Justine technically didn't defend her title last week, but still got a banner. How convenient. At least it's a nice song. And here we go with one of the fallen sisters, Trisha Easterwood. Trisha reporting to the main stage. Guys, get your singles ready. Now, I've known Trisha a long time, and there's definitely seems something different about her lately.
And her opponent, she is the UHW Women's Champion from Harwich, Essex, UK, standing five foot seven, weighing in at one hundred and twenty seven pounds, Justine Time. Now, Joe. Justine waving the flag proudly and planting the Union Jack right there in the steps. It is a good time to be British and UHW. With Justine holding the women's title. And Mac holding the UU title. It's good to be British around here. Absolutely. Justine planted the flag in the steps, and it's probably going to be there until next week's show. Alfie bringing the belt over here to commentary and placing it on the table, and... Looks like these two may be ready to get it on. Wow, chicka, wow, wow. And there's the bell. Chris moving in quite quickly towards Justine. Is she Is she really offering a handshake? And we got a small package. One, two. Almost had it right then and there. Suckering her in with the gesture of good sportsmanship. And Trisha fell for it almost. Now I see. And we got hair pulling going on and moving back and forth.
We're about two seconds away from a cat fight here. And a shove from Crusher. And then a quick elbow strike. A leg stretcher! Trish going the smart route, working on a body part. It's always a good plan. Pick a body part and go at it as soon as possible. And keep out. I'll see her into the corner. And wrapping the knee around the ropes seems to be the move of the night. And a snapmare taking her out of the corner. Alfie said get her out. She got her out. He didn't mention in what state. <laughs> and Trisha now thinks she's a Fay Weaver. Oh, yeah, you probably don't want to say that. Yeah. Where she can hear you. Trisha putting pressure on the neck here. Justine fighting her way back to her feet. And a mule kick takes her down. Whatever gets you out of that hole. Trisha taking a moment to catch her breath. Turning around and now two are facing each other once again. Trish is still a little worse for wear from the earlier beatdown by Izzy. And going in and grabbing her with a headlock. Justine reversing into a hammerlock. And Justine takes her down with a snapmare. Reversal of a reversal of a reversal. And a counter. Off the ropes, basement drop kick. And the matchbook pin. One, two. 
Not quite. And Justine just taking it to Trisha, backing her up against the ropes with those ball punches. And one more for good measure. Straight through the ropes, both ladies out to the floor. <laughs> Devastating maneuver there. Going for me is like that shows how much the championship means to Justine. And let's not forget a few weeks ago after Trisha was attacked by anarchy severely outside the ring, the ribs was one of the things that were hurt. Or after that, they could very much be re hurt. Alfie up to seven. Trisha with an eye rake there. Oh, oh. After telling him to get back in the ring, Trisha throwing Justine into the steps. That is a very good way of coming back from that spear through the ropes. On a knee right in the head. Justine goes tumbling over the stairs. They're going to get counted out if they're not careful. Alfie up to eight. And Trisha with the Irish whip. And then Justine back into the ring. I think Trish has got to stay on her right now. And Trish with the knee drop. And we got to cover one, two. Justine managing to kick out there. Just able to get her shoulder up. Sending it to the ropes. <laughs> J 
Justine able to quickly slip past Treasure and get her with a German suplex. Justine going for a pin. Just a two count. Justine. <laughs> Getting up at Alvy's face. Justine's saying she had her for a 15 count. <laughs> Must be that new math. I think that's po possibly Scott Steiner math. And the argument continues. Oh no, bitch, I had that bitch down. Oh no, you didn't. <laughs> Justine saying, who taught you how to rough? It certainly wasn't me. Alfie retorting with, you never learned how to ref. Justine, a former referee here in UHW who had the book of refereeing. I saw it. That was a pretty big book. She's definitely naturally gifted in certain areas. Maybe refereeing wasn't one of them. Justine getting quite heated. Gotta say, as she walks away, she does tick-tock like Big Ben. Trisha seems to have rolled out of the ring to recover. To recover there. Possibly rethink her strategy. Or as
as the crowd just pointed out, possibly looking for another tire iron. Also could very much be the case. These two have been going at it now for at least 10 minutes, kind of like an episode of Jerry Springer. Nobody in the crowd chanting anybody's name, though. And Justine quoting the book of referee. Not really sure about the validity of that book. It was a pretty big book, but I also saw some of the pages were drawn in crayon. Really? Trisha back in the ring. Alfie schooling Justine on the proper way to f make a pin. Justine not impressed. I think they're both wrong and they're both right. I think they're quoting two different things so that book can be a little bit contradictory at times. You know, like sometimes... Sometimes when in people, the same sentence. <laughs> sometimes when people slide into the ring, they break the count, and sometimes they don't. Depends on the situation. We just had a pin attempt for two. As Justine goes to the outside of the ring. <coughs> and throws a tantrum. Justine blaming someone in the crowd. When at first you don't succeed, go out and heckle one of the first people in the crowd saying it's their fault. <laughs> and Trish launches herself out of the ring. Both of them down on the floor, Alfie is counting. Trish 
now upon her feet. Trisha showing being a fallen angel, taking flight, and just like a fallen angel, falls to the ground. Fortunately, Justine broke her fall. Amazing how that worked out, isn't it? It's almost as if she planned it. <sighs> and Ralphie. Alfie F4. <laughs> yes, I also I did call him Ralphie. You'll shoot your eye out. Justine with an uppercut and Shining Wizard! And staying on top of it with some stomps. It looks like she's pushing her knee right into Trish's throat right there. I can honestly say I don't think that's a legal move. So now Alfie's got to decide whether he's going to count the chokehold or count them being outside the ring. Not some nice words there by Trisha. Very unchristian. Justine letting go. Uh, Slides in and breaks it out. Now, Irish whipping Trish into the steps. And Justine back in the ring as Alfie continues to count. And Justine goes back out. she's doing it on purpose just to make sure that Alfie stays up on his counting. And Justine sending Trish back on the rope, following, following her into the ring. Laying a boot in. Just don't. Oh. She's hey, where she goes? In Bob's your uncle. Trish has to make a decision here. Is she going to tap? If she could manage to get enough leverage, she could try and roll up into a pin here, but nope, the pain is too much as Trish taps out.
Ladies and gentlemen, your winner by submission and still UHW Women's Champion with her first official defense of the title, Justine Time. That was a hot fought battle. And uh, I've never seen two referees go at it that hard before. Alfie with some parting words for Justine. And that concludes UHW Havoc for today. Be sure to join us tomorrow at 3 p.m. SLT for DNA. I am Jace Hunter, and to my right... I am Tommy McGregor. And we'll see you guys on the flip side. This video was filmed on location by Zarakan Productions. Zarakan Productions is an umbrella group for many YouTube shows and businesses both inside and outside of Second Life. Please go to zarakan.com for a complete listing of shows and businesses associated with Zarakan Productions and their own media links. Zarakan Productions shows have been organized alphabetically in playlists in a year, month, Day format for easier video navigation. Multiple part videos have been named accordingly starting with part 1, and the last video of a multiple part video series will have end as a part of its title. Please like, comment, and share this video as it helps both Zarakan Productions, and the creators of this video's content. Also, be sure to check the playlists for past episodes of show content, and subscribe to this channel for future videos. Thank you for watching, and happy wandering.